Okay, this is Pi News episode 37. So first up was this story from the register and uh, it's titled, Having trouble getting your mitt on that Raspberry Pi, you aren't alone. So they spoke to the founder, Eben Upton, and it's basically about chip supply issues. Um, they're very hard to get a hold of at the moment for lots of companies and uh, obviously the Raspberry Pi Foundation sell a lot of pies. And they said they had them in stock at the uh, Cambridge store, uh, but Farnell was showing a lead time of 373 days for a Pi 4, 4 gig. But then others were quoting September and the Pi Hat had stock in, so it's not as bad as it sounds. They mentioned that the 2 gigabyte models uh, are hard to get hold of, but the 4 gig one is the popular one. And there's some good figures on the Compute Module 4. Last month, over 100,000 Compute Modules were shipped. But I won't show everything that's in there, but it's definitely worth a read, and I'll put a link in the description to that. Next up is a build, a mini bar top by Jam Hamster. And I've covered Jam Hamster before in Pi News. There are so many different builds and uh, very, very impressive work. You can see here, there's a load of photos, uh, and the photos are all of the finished product. But uh, I quite enjoyed the Twitter feed, so if you scroll down, uh, there you go, there's a build thread here on Twitter. And this has got loads more information, loads of close-up pictures. Uh, you can see how the joystick is put together and the six buttons as well. And you can see how it's all constructed, how it all fits in with all this metal surround. Yeah, very, very impressively put together. Tom's Hardware did a story recently and uh, this was how to customise the splash screen on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and basically you can change how the splash screen looks and play a little video. And there's various different information in there uh, if you want to go through it. Uh, again, I'll put a link in the description, but uh, it looks pretty straightforward. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, it looks very impressive. And I'm sure people, especially if they're going to build their own sort of RetroPie builds or something like that, to customise that completely is, uh, is a really nice thing to see. This next story is from the Raspberry Pi official blog and uh, it's about a tease made which is using a Raspberry Pi Zero and also Google Calendar. So you can set a calendar event on your tease made and uh, it will start boiling the water 10 minutes before you wake up and uh, it plays the uh, British National Anthem and it's quite a nice stylish video uh, a real bit of retro. I remember working in a store where we sold teasmaids, but you don't tend to see them much anymore. Hackaday is where the next story is from, and this is a Raspberry Pi powered standing desk. So you can see here there's a Raspberry Pi Zero, and uh, the owner has hacked into the control board of the desk, uh, which is where the buttons are to raise and lower the desk. And it says in the story, like many office workers, David Kong found himself the lucky recipient of a motorized sit-stand desk. Also, like most office workers with such a desk, he found himself mostly sitting. I'm the opposite, so I've got the standing desk. This is my FlexiSpot desk. I did a video on it. I got given it by FlexiSpot, and it has been brilliant. I've left it. I, d I can't remember the last time I lowered it. I just do all my videos stood up. Any of my messing around, I prefer to be stood up. But uh, I guess if you're in an office environment and you do, you're there all day, uh, then this could come in handy. Because what they've done is set a timer to uh, raise the desk every 45 to 60 minutes. Another Tom's Hardware story here, Raspberry Pi 4 graphics driver update. So if we scroll down, so according to the latest round of patches submitted by Maxine Ripard, we're soon going to receive improved support for 4K 60 hertz resolution. So the developer is trying to bring support to the Linux kernel has revised the DRM of the VC4 for the seventh time and submitted the changes to the public Linux repository. It's unlikely the support will land on the upcoming Linux kernel version 5.15 as the DRM cutoff period for this release has ended. However, we could see it in upcoming kernel revisions, so that'll be nice. Look forward to testing that. So more Tom's hardware, uh, a Raspberry Pi Zero used to test old TVs. So if you're looking to buy an old CRT TV and the only connection it's got is an aerial connection, and you want to be able to test that it actually works. Uh, this Raspberry Pi Zero with a board, uh, which gives it a UHF output, so basically like an aerial signal coming into the TV, uh, allows you to test a really old TV. I mean, I, I can't remember selling a TV back in the day that didn't have a composite input, so, you know, like this yellow connection, which is kind of gone away now. A few TVs still have it, but most TVs don't. Uh, and my CRT TV, my old Sony TV, which I showed in Pi News 30, uh, that was using the composite output because the output on the Raspberry Pi, in fact, I can probably get it from this picture. Yeah, this, uh, the audio jack is actually sending a video output to an old style TV. So if you're using a CRT 
as long as it's got a composite input or a SCART, then you would be able to use the Pi 4 just as is. But uh, if you want to be able to test something with the UHF, you need this unique little thing. Really impressive. And it looks like, it says here, RF only TV sets within 100 feet can tune into the Raspberry Pi video feed. So it looks like it's transmitting it rather than being plugged in. OMG Ubuntu did a story on Mate Desktop 1.26, so it looks like they've uh, made some changes to the desktop, so it looks a bit nicer, and there's a few more changes listed in there. And I thought I'd have a look, because uh, it says here you can now upgrade to Mate Desktop, uh, and it talks about users uh, with 20.04 and 21.04 can now upgrade. So I think I'll give this a try. Uh, so I need to boot into Ubuntu Mate. So I just need to find the SD card, and uh, I put mate on a green SD card, which I thought was handy. Uh, here we go, this SP in green. It will be in one of my speed test videos. And I managed to drop this the other day and all the cards went flying. But I do love this little SD card, 3D printed case. So let's shut down Twister OS, which is what I normally use. And we'll put the SD card in. Switch off switch on so this is how it looks at the moment I'm hoping this works on the Pi I haven't tested it yet so I figured I'd just give it a try so we've got some instructions here and also I've got loads of updates look uh, because I haven't booted this for a while uh, I have 316 megabytes but I'm going to leave that for now Let's just minimize that and see if this will work independently so let's paste that in enter to continue let's copy the next bit sudo apt upgrade and paste that in. Oh yeah, here we go, 364 meg of additional disk space. So I'm gonna to have to do that anyway, so yes. So it looks like that's gonna take some time, so let's do the next story. So this was a Raspberry Pi voice assistant. And as you can see from this, uh, it's got a display and the display responds. So when you ask it questions, the display shows you information a lot like the Google and the Amazon equivalents. Uh, but also it lights up the speakers as well. And the speakers are fully assembled, you can see here, from the PCB up. So I must have a look at doing something like that in the future. Okay, so I tried the last step. And uh, unfortunately it says Mate Desktop is already the newest version. So I've installed NeoFetch. And uh, as you can see from this, I've got Ubuntu Mate 20.10. And it needs to be 20.04 and 21.04. So I'll have to try that on another one. Anyway, let's get on with the other stories. So last up is this modified Argon 1 M.2 case. And I really like this because it came with a load of pictures. I've got the M.2 adapter, but I haven't got the Argon 1 case to go with it. But if I click on this, so as you can see, it looks normal on the inside aside from the 90 degree USB-C adapter and slightly cut daughterboard corner. And uh, they put a bigger, quieter fan in uh, because some other people had said about fan noise in the case. So that's one thing they've sorted out. And you can see some hot glue to make it all stay in place. And the USB-C on-the-go adapter has been added. Uh, now, I used to use USB-C on-the-go, which is where you can power it and also use the USB-C port uh, as a data port as well, or you know, for plugging things in or USB sticks or things like that. Uh, and this particular individual needed that use and uh, so came up with this quite cool way of doing it. So I thought we'd have a look at my Argon M.2 adapter uh, because when I showed it in my previous video, I put the case on top of the Pi. It was just what was convenient for me at the time, but I kept meaning to do it the other way around. So let's have a look at that. Now I'm definitely a fan of silent cooling. So I could definitely use the Ice Tower cooler, uh, which is what I'm using at the moment for this video and have been using throughout uh, without using the fan and it keeps it nice and cool. Um, so with this other configuration, so basically if I pop this, it basically just sits on top. Uh, and there are screws that go through. So you can see there's screws here to go through into this to hold it in place. But then we have uh, a bit of a gap here. So I need to build this up. Uh, and I've got the thing to do that. So these little adapters uh, from my kit are the same height as these bits here. They're almost exactly the same height, so there's going to be no movement there. So what I think I'm going to do is put it under here, like that, and maybe use a bolt to hold that in place. There you go. So one of those to hold it in place. Yeah, and that sits solidly then. Uh, I'm going to put the other one in the other side as well. 
There you go, so that's that one as well. So that's the same sort of height. So that now sits perfectly in place. There's no movement there. Uh, and obviously once it's screwed into place, it's not gonna move around anywhere. Um, this also may work in a cluster case somehow. Uh, I might have a look at that in a later video, but basically this USB adapter holds the two bits together like that. And you can see that these holes on the back line up. So I just need to secure that through into here. And you can see these going quite deep and use my screwdriver kit for this. Okay, so that one goes through. That's enough just to get a bolt on the top of it. And one on the other side, not so easy to get to. Okay, so that's four bolts now, all in place. Obviously, I'd have to do something different for the ice tower cooler, but for now, I'm just gonna put the Pimeroni fan shim on there uh, for a bit of active cooling. Because I've had my Pimeroni fan shim for ages, uh, I use half an SD card to spread the pins out. It was a tip I got from one of my other videos. There it is all put together. So I've still got this USB 3 socket accessible, the USB 2s, the Ethernet. Uh, the only thing is the SD card slot is lost now. Uh, and I did think maybe I could use this 52 pi adapter, uh, which slots in here. Uh, and that gives you full size HDMI and also an SD card slot but I still have to get an adapter in the back, and obviously I can't do that, which is this card adapter, because there is no room at the back, so I'd have to end up cutting that case uh, to be able to allow that. Yeah, I need a better solution than that. Yeah, I think I'll have to play around with it some more and have a look at some of the other breakout boards I've got. This one's an interesting one that comes in this case, uh, so that would still go over the M.2 drive, but obviously the Argon case must go over the M.2 drive. I was just thinking about heat and how that works. Um, but at least I've got something which I can use now, uh, which is nice and quiet because the Pimeroni fan shim is nice and quiet. I have the option of making it completely passive by putting the ice tower cooler on top of it, and I've got the M.2 drive. And if I don't need the M.2 drive, obviously I can unplug this and use it as a normal Pi. Uh, apart from the SD card slot in this configuration. I also have the option of somehow using it with this case. Uh, this is how I like to do it because I switch between multiple drives all the time. Uh, and so the way I've been using this is just with a long uh, or a longer USB 3 cable just to plug in and either had it on the side or in my previous cluster case, uh, it fitted inside. Anyway, let's go back. You can see my desktop looks different because I have managed to update Ubuntu Mate with the latest desktop version. And everything looks very nice and seems to work very well. Everything's nice and swift. Uh, and from the article, it mentioned about the theme that was added, Yaru Mate Dark and Light. And uh, I have that in here. So if I go into themes, there you go, Yaru Mate Dark and Light, and it picks a custom option. So uh, yeah, really pleased with that. I do like Ubuntu Mate and I haven't used it for quite a while, but uh, it is looking very, very good. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.